turn that off before I even start. What a pretty area, the landscaping. So nice, but you can't even see it. That's the roadside landscaping. I'm at a nursery, Plant Haven. It's, it's over there. What's up, Garden Friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. This is all very last minute. I wasn't planning on filming this, but I was in the area, so I thought I'd bring y'all along. Might be brief. I don't know. It looks kind of crowded in there, which means I may or may not do much filming. You know, I don't want to film other people. I think that that's rude. It's cute though, right? Nice building. Oh uh, yeah, I'm already feeling nervous. There are people looking at me. I don't know. I don't know how much you guys are gonna get to see of any of this. Oh, already liking what I'm seeing. So this is Plant Haven. I've been to Plant Haven in other videos before, but it was a different location. This one's closer to my house. It's much smaller, but it looks like they managed to get a lot of stuff into a small space. Oh, I'm such a sucker for a scrawny at a Nydia palm. You don't want to be scrawny, but I just, I like them. I think they're so cute. That's a good price. $14.99? Yeah, that's a pretty good price. Oh. This is one of the most full little ties I've seen at all the nurseries when I've been out looking at them. 124, not terrible. Usually it's just a couple leaves, just a stick for about that price. Oh, that looks good. Some Dithambachias and Thematophyllums, lots of Talansias. I'm, I, I am shocked with how much they have fit into this space. I would not have expected when I pulled in this parking lot for them to have this much at this nursery. Oh, got some nice looking stuff over here. Strawberry shake, hundred bucks. I don't know, I think that's good. I don't, you know, I'm I'm out of the aeroid stuff. So that's, y'all will know what the better prices are at this point. I haven't looked at them in a long time, price wise, that is. I'm seeing the ties just scattered all over the place in here. Oh, jeez, these are so stinking cute. That's a good price, too. These are really full. And whenever I order them, they never show up looking. They always show up looking like garbage. But this isn't... This is like a terrarium thing for me. And I'm not doing terrariums right now. It's summer. I'm doing stuff outside. But good to know that they have them here as an option in the fall or winter when I'm doing more stuff inside. That's a very pretty leaf. Very pretty leaf. Nice plant. Oh yeah. Like the way this guy's looking. <sighs> okay, time to get outside. Actually, probably time to grab a cart. I don't I don't know where to start. I know that's a good price that ginger, and I want to get it. And these fishtails look good too. I don't want one, but I kinda do. But I know I shouldn't. Plumeria not included in sale. What is the sale? I saw there's a sign that said sale, but that's it. I haven't seen anything else about it. Proof and winter shrubs, $25.99. Hmm. It's depending on the size, that's not too bad. It's got a good selection of stuff in here. Oh, those. Those little guys. Those are the proven winners. Shrubs. Lots of perennials. Good selection. I like the way they're laid out. Hanging baskets are really full. I know, I'm very whispering. There's I'm very whispering, that's not a word. You know what I mean. There are people everywhere, and it's awkward. Hey, Semper Vivums are big and full. Those are nice sized containers. They look really good. And my, my threshold's way off with a lot of plants, because the past few times I've looked at plants, it's been at Home Depot and Lowe's, where everything's on clearance, and, well, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's. I love these geraniums. I wish I had the sun for them. I can't think of any spot where I could put them where they would really probably do all that well, but it would be fun. Although maybe the spot where I put the dichondra up by the trellis where I have the passion flower, I could move that dichondra and no, I need to stop it. Don't do that. Those are all good thoughts for next year. This year, I think I'm good on hanging baskets, but oh, man. These are huge. That's probably close to four feet. It's so stinking pretty. Oh, looks nice too. Love the hardy hibiscus. Oh, they have the carnival. I think that's what the variegated one's called, isn't it? Carnival? Let's see here. Get down, have an actual look at the tag. Summer carnival. Rose mallow. 
really pretty leaves on these. That's a fun one. I've always thought about planting it, but I'd never seen a big one in person. I didn't know if I'd like the foliage. I think I like it. Maybe. I like it better than the foliage on the regular machetos, like the green stuff down there. It has a very dry look to it. That's more fun and colorful. It does just kind of look like a variegated sweet potato vine, though. That's a cute coconut. Oh, I hope that wasn't down for their stuff. I was filming. The sun's been on my screen, so I'm able to see it. Hopefully y'all been seeing everything I've been seeing. It's a nice looking coconut. That's all it was saying there. Good looking coconut. Lots of diplodinias. Oh, okay. They have some of the Pakistan, not Pakistan. Who are you? It, yeah, Pakistakis. I think I might grab some of these. What gumfrina is this? I've seen the pink and I've seen the white. What's this corally colored one? I like that a lot. What are the odds that I even picked up the right one? Oh, no, no, no label. But I really like the color of the flowers on that. The nice tone to it, especially when you mix it in with the purples. It looks really nice. Fireball. Decent size, too. I, mean, I guess that's about how big you expect them to get. Fun clustering, I guess we'll call it. A heavily offsetting near Regelia bromeliad that likes the full sun. They get a nice, vibrant red color the more light that they get. I've wanted to put a fireball there since this whole thing, this new step and piling situation was put together. I've wanted a fireball right in that vicinity, maybe on the ground coming out underneath everything. I don't know yet. Uh, it, sorry that everything ended so abruptly. The camera overheated. It was just too hot and I took the case off and tried to cool it off, but it just wasn't happening. So I said, well, that's enough. You saw pretty much everything there was to see. I got four of the Pakistakis, Ludias. They are rehydrating right now. They were getting a lot of sun, which they can take, but afternoon shade is really best for them when it's hot outside, especially, you know, when you have in a parking lot type situation where there's a lot of pavement around. Afternoon shade. I think they will look better with some TLC. These were buy one, get one. So three bucks a pop. And at regular price, $5.99 a piece, that's pretty good. I would have done that. That just so happened that they were 50% off. And I did grab one Alpinia. I got the one with the most variegation on it that they had. I have the Zarumba, the variegated ones, they just haven't been looking great at the nurseries this year. I guess as far as being healthy plants go, they've looked okay. But the variegation on them hasn't been what it should be, typically with the variegated shell gingers so i don't know but i it was only like seven bucks i probably should have gotten two but that was one of those things where i didn't want to get it if i didn't know exactly what i was going to do with it and i have an idea but i didn't want to like buy a whole bunch of things just because they were in clearance wanted them to be things that i actually wanted and needed especially these pakistakis i've wanted some of those for a while i planted them down in the hydrangea planters so those fun yellow plumes coming up down there there are two in each one of those containers when I planted them, they're much larger than these over here, the ones that I just showed y'all that I just got. But you know, these will grow, and that's fine. I've wanted to have some over here on this end of the patio just to well, one even things out. Yeah, I'm down there. It's nice to have them over there. And there's some things over here that are just bugging me, and uh, I can't get past it. So I figure if I don't like it, may as well change it on that note. These need they need to grow need to go somewhere else. I don't know where, what to do with them. A friend of mine got them for me and they're very beautiful. I do love them, but uh, not in the garden. At least not right now. Maybe later in the season when I... It, I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say there. We'll see what I end up doing with those. These two deck planters, I'm just... I'm not into them. I don't like the way they turned out. I think they look terrible. I think it's because there are two plants in each one of these that are plants that I traditionally just do not like. <laughs> and that's these red and green caladiums. I'm not a fan of these. I've never liked them. I don't know, because to me they look plastic. Does anybody else get that vibe from them? It's just a thing. It's I have an association with them that I don't enjoy having them around. And you know, I buy these caladium bulbs in big packs where they're all assorted. So you just plant them, you don't know what you're going to get. And I got a lot of these this year, which are my least favorites. These back here, they're okay. It's still not my favorites. I typically prefer white caladiums. So something, you know, like this, fine. These down here, eh, I'll take it. But these, 
I just don't like them. When I look at these containers, all I see are the Caladiums and the Red Dragon Wing Begonias. I'm iffy with red because I feel like it just distracts and it's all you can see. So I would like with both these containers to, which is, I'm just going to, I'm going to take them apart. I'm going to get those out of there. I'm not going to get rid of them. I will just move these to the garden while they'll be back further behind some other plants and I think they'll look better. And the begonias I'm going to pot up and probably put them on my front porch where I won't have to look at them. <laughs> they are really big and healthy though. These dragon wing begonias, like look at how lush and full they are. And really big flower sets on them. Beautiful peduncles. But again, it's just not for me. I don't like them. I, what I, I'll probably just start off going easy here and I'll just pull the caladiums and put the pack of stackies in place. I'll put one on each side so that they look right right and let that sit with me for a day and then I'll decide about the begonias but I, I'll probably pull them but maybe I'll like the begonias more without the red caladiums in front of them also when you get too much red and pink going on again it's just an association thing and this is just a me thing but the red and the pink and the green like I'm just I'm getting Christmas and Valentine's Day <laughs> with this color combination and uh, I, it needs to change gotta go gotta make it the way I want it if I can pull that off for six bucks, why not give it a try? I'm not gonna do this right now. It's, well, when it's getting late, it's Friday. I still have some things to do. I'm gonna go out and, you know, just do Friday things and maybe pick up some time this weekend. Start pulling what I don't like, replacing some things. I also would like to do some work over here in the step area because I'm having a similar situation that I've talked about before, how there's some things over here that I like, but I don't like them over here like the black coral colocasia. It's just, to me, when I'm looking at this area from afar, that's all I see. It's just, it's taking away. So, it, and it's not planted over here. It's just in a pot. So I can pick the pot up and move it and put something else there. And then I need to pull this one too, because I can't, I just, I can't stand it. I walk out the store and I'm like, oh, what a beautiful view. And I look down and I see that and I'm just like, ugh, no, 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 no. You're wet. You're coming back outside. We're not, that's not what I wasn't telling you to come in the house. So I'm gonna pull that, maybe put something else there. It might just move this rodeo around. I don't know, we'll get to all that. And then I'm gonna do something with these orchids over here. I know by the time this video comes out, the orchids will have been on this table for like three weeks in your guys' time. But for me, it's been two and a half days. These showed up two and a half days ago and then I finished filming the vlog. Well, I filmed the video that these were and then I finished filming the vlog that was last weekend's video. And uh, then I had like half a day off did some things and now I'm back. So it's time to get these put away. If I repot anything, then I will show y'all, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that with anything over here right now because they're all in a state with their spikes that I don't want to mess with their roots. So we'll just be probably faux potting some things and just, I don't know, just setting things around to make them look nice. Do you see what I'm talking about with the black coral? It's a beautiful elephant ear and I really like the shape on it. It's very healthy, just I don't know. That's all I can see. I don't like it over there. Hey, but first, before all that other fun stuff I was just talking about, do something completely different. I have, <laughs> I think I got ahead of myself, didn't even pick up the camera quite yet, but I have a seashell back here, is what I was going to say, that has a very nice hole in it. And I've been looking at this shell for the last couple of weeks thinking, why do I not have something planted in this? This is the perfect thing throw a plant in that. Some succulents, maybe? That could be an option. Pull that out of there. That doesn't need to be there. It's not going to work for this. It even sits in just the right way, too. Is there another one of those flowers in there? I do not know how that got there. I'm going to assume it has something to do with my niece and nephew having been in town. So I'm probably put that in there. Yeah, just have to find a, well, pretty big piece of screening. I don't think I have a big piece of screening, but if I can find one big enough to fill in this hole right there, that one, then I think that might look kind of cute. I have some Sempervivums that could use a home, or uh, maybe a Talansia or something like that, and I wouldn't even need any soil. Uh, I'm gonna poke around if, I shouldn't even, I may not be able to find screening, this may not happen. Okay, got lucky here, poked around the garage, and I found some options, the separate items, those weren't in the garage. The screening though, came down hard there. This is actually a media bag for filtration for a fish tank. 
but that would work. It's a much finer screen. And this is screening that's meant for bonsai pots. This is probably what I should use. I'm thinking I might have to double up on it. I think that would work the best. Hmm? That's a pretty good fit. I'm not going to glue it in place just because I don't know if I'm always going to want this seashell to have a piece of screening in it. Should I double up on that? I don't really think I need to because I'm putting Semper Vivums in here. Hens and chicks, you know, good drainage. That's not going to hurt them. By doubling it up, it would just slow the drainage some. Uh, maybe that you know, might not be a bad idea. Nope, don't like it. Too much work. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Every time I tried to get the second layer in there, the first layer started to pull out and push out. So I'm not going to do that. And I also don't really want to destroy one of these filter media bags if I don't have to. So this should be just fine. This is all-purpose potting mix. Has a few things added to it. Mostly just uh, some extra perlite and some chunky bark mix for aeration. But it's not much. I just tossed a little bit of extra stuff in there from a succulent blend for them. The Semper Vivums, as long as things drain well, they really don't need it to be like a specific blend made for cactus and succulents. It's usually not necessary. They're pretty sturdy and tough as it is. Oh, I could be filling this from up here, couldn't I? That would probably, well, I don't know if that would be easier. I'm just going to get soil everywhere. Maybe that could work. Let's try it. <laughs> yes, it, most of that's going on the cardboard. But this is why I use a cardboard so that I can just scoop that soil back up, not have that end up going to waste. This is actually pretty nifty. Sharp and dangerous, but very nifty being able to fill it from up here. That's one thing, if you've ever planted up seashells before, then you'll know what I'm talking about, how it can be difficult to get the soil to get inside all the little spirals. It's just because of the air pockets. Typically what I do here, is I'm trying to fill everything that goes back into the shell right in here. So pressing the soil down in there. And that's what's going to hold that screening in place. You could glue it down. It wouldn't be a bad idea to glue it down. You could use hot glue. You could use a uh, super glue. I'd use a gel if you were going to do that because it's easier to work with with this sort of thing. Like I said, though, I don't want to glue it down because I may end up deciding that I want this shell for something else at some point someday, so I think this is good like that. I don't want to put too much soil in there just yet because I need to get the Semper Vivums out here. These are the Berry Blues from the Czech Charms. It's basically the Pacific Blue Semper Vivum. The more sun they get, the more of a silvery blue hue they have to them. Pretty sturdy one. You know, hens and chicks, if you live in a hot, humid climate, they don't always do great. But these tend to be uh, pretty sturdy. I've had them come back for me after some fairly wet winters. Which isn't the same much, you know. Hens and chicks are supposed to be hardy all the way to like zone four. Some of them zone three. Uh, and it, that just depends though on your type. This one says zone three. So that's again, climate depending. Really for us, it just depends on what kind of a winter we're having and how wet things are. And you can see, looking at this, it's ready for a repot. It's got a bunch of crusty stuff on the inside so getting this out of its nursery pot and into something new will be good for especially something new where it has the ability to overflow over the edge of a container it's like it's hooked on something in there there we go that's out i just pull the bottom of the root ball off i know probably some people go oh my gosh that's too much that's just so extreme there's succulents they're going to reroot no matter what as long as you put them into the right potting media it's so easy. That's why I love working with succulents. And I have these pieces right here that I pulled off that I think I might just stick down here into that hole. I should probably add some more soil into there first. But you get the idea, right? All the little cracks that are in here. I'm going to go ahead and take one of the little offshoots from the Semper Vivums and try and get them in there and pack some more soil around them. I need two hands. There we go. That's cute. It is, it's so full you can't even tell that there's a seashell underneath there unless you're looking at it from up above. So I need to make sure to set this someplace where that will be noticeable. But yeah, I think that looks cool. Get that set down at an angle, probably somewhere over 
by the steps. I'm gonna do some washing over there tomorrow, so I'll wait to put this over there. But hey, I think that looks nice. And I, I got the planting bug out of me. I had an itch. I wanted to plant stuff, but I'm also, I should be getting inside and getting ready because I'm supposed to be somewhere in like half an hour. But this is, this is good. It got something done. And uh, it's cute and easy. And now I don't feel bad about not having potted up the Sempervivum yet. What do we think? Is it cute? I think it's cute. A seashell with succulents. Can't go wrong with that. Maybe would have been better to use a more fine sedum in there, but I was just working with what I had. That was a very last minute thing. It's the next day, good morning, or whenever you're watching this. Hopefully the last few seconds have been good for y'all. I have some things gathered up over here, ready to go. Last night I was like chomping at the bit to come out here and do this, but it was dark. I knew I shouldn't do it, so I just waited until this morning. I think that it's just gonna look so much better getting this red out of here. Like I said, I know some of y'all maybe really like it. I just, I don't like how these came out. That happens every now and then. It's been a while since I've redone a container mid season, but when I do it, it usually means that I really, really, really wanna do it. And clearance plants, great way to do it. So these were, what did I say? I think I said $6, it was 12 bucks for all those. I have some shrubble anthes back here that have gotten very big and need to be potted up into something. So I figured, well, hey, why not over here? I want more color and different foliage, just not red foliage. I think that this is gonna be a good way to go. So I think the way I'm going to do this, what I should do is, well, I'm just gonna give them a little tug. This is not what you should do. You should use a hand trowel and dig down way underneath them and lift them up. But I have all these other things planted in front I'm going to very gently lift these caladiums up. Very, very gently. There we go. Didn't get a ton of root with it, but that's okay. I'm going to cut off all the foliage, replant it. As long as the corn's still there, they should be fine. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to clear these out, and then we can get replanting with some nice, <laughs> I said fresh. I don't know if fresh is the word to use, but new. Some nice new color in these containers. Okay, that's already so much better. I know it looks messy because you know it's just in there pulling and tearing at things, but it's I don't I don't know what it is. When these are all together over here in the gorilla cart, I think they look beautiful. Like if I were to put this in a container, just these caladiums and these I almost said bogan villas, the begonias. I think that'd be a beautiful arrangement. It was just the way they were playing with the use. I'm realizing now that I stand back that I think the issue for me is more the use. Than anything else and I knew that that might be something that I would struggle with when I planted these up last what was it fall winter I think it was winter but I want the evergreens out here it's nice having some containers that have the year-round interest in them and uh, there aren't a lot of options at where I live 6b 7a to put evergreens in containers that are going to be reliable that don't just look like Christmas trees like I could put an arb or something in these which are going to outgrow them very very quickly and the idea with the use is that these are the i think these are hilly eyes yeah hilly i use so you can shape these just about whatever you want to and i figure someday as they grow i will probably have them cut out into nice square hedges and it adds some privacy for the hot tub it just makes sense for three quarters of the year for summertime uh, i'm struggling with them i think that it's because of the fine needles and them being darker. They lend themselves to something much more formal. So uh, what I probably should have done from the beginning with these containers would have been to put something in here that has some more whites and soft blues or maybe soft pinks and uh, things that have uh, more structure to them, if that makes sense, like um, Scavola. I think that would have been a nice trailer to go with these. It's more formal. And then a couple of maybe some uh, gomfrina in the back for something wispy, though I think that would have looked kind of, that would look messy with those. I don't know. No reason to think about that right now because I don't have any of those plants. What I have, y'all have seen, it's tackies and the shrubble anthes. So that's what I'm going to do in these. I am thinking, since I only have one shrubble anthes for each container, that I should probably put them on the outsides, on the the far side of the hot tub wall. That would probably make the most sense. I only say that because on each one of these planters, the far side 
of this wall right here gets a little bit more shade, not a little bit, actually a good amount more shade than the other side. There's more sun on the inside of these. I already mocked this one up. We'll get to that in a minute and talk about it some more. So they'll have some reprieve from the afternoon sun. <laughs> the point is sometimes things just kind of fry right here, pavement and the exposed corner. So I have to be choose about what goes in them. But I also, I really like the way the purple and the sheen plays with the trunk on the areca palms, that nice green and yellow that you have over here with that purple. I think it looks really nice. The Shrublanthes can get pretty big and wild, so having one per container is fine. If I had one on each side, that may end up being a bit too much, because you also have to consider you want to be able to get in and out of this thing without having leaves and sticks and things smacking you in the face. So that paired with the yellow on the Pakistakis, I think should look pretty good. I'm going to put the ones that look more sun-tortured, what I'll call it, towards the outside, because that's where there's a little bit more shade. And the ones that are looking pretty good, I'll stick those on the outside just because they're already healthier and further along, so I think that they'll be able to handle that better. And Pakistakis, these guys right here, they're pretty vigorous growers. From the smaller size, if I were to go ahead and prune off all the flowers on them, you know, cut them back about 25 to 50%, they'll branch back out and be well, just as big as this guy over here within a matter of weeks. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not, just because we're already so far into the season. I don't know if I want to cut them back, but that might be an option. Ah, that's beautiful. This is, it, my brain just feels so much more relaxed looking at these now. There was just, it was too much, too much with the red and everything. They're going to need some time to fill out, right? These right here, the ones that I put on the shade on the outside of each one of these with the curly, crinkly leaves. I think those are going to start to look much better now that they're going to be getting some afternoon shade. The the Stroblanthes that's down here, when I say Stroblanthes, by the way, if you don't know, I'm referring to Persian Shield. It does blend in an awful lot with the hibiscus from far away, but up close, I think it stands out just fine. That's the thing, you put dark plants in the shade, you can't really see them. That was my issue over here that I talked about before with the black coral elephant ear. I love it, but... I just think we could do a lot better because that spot feels dark and it feels even darker when you have that plant there. But when I have it over here against the yellow, especially with the croton in the background, with that fresh flush of foliage on it, I think that looks so nice. Now, there is an issue here and it's that now that I've done all of this, I'm standing back going, uh, do I keep these trailers? Cause I think they look pretty junky. I enjoy the color and everything. This is my first year trying the Mayan Sunset Crazy Tunias. They haven't done great <laughs> in these containers, especially the one that was getting more shade. I do think that that one will, if I were to leave it in here, going to look a lot better since I did a lot of pruning on the palms so some more light can get into that spot. But for me, the ones that have done the best have been getting more afternoon shade. And it's just that time of year with petunias where they start to get lanky and leggy so the options here would be to cut them all back by about 50 percent and then wait for them to flush back out if this were a typical year that's something i would be doing in early july probably but the way the weather has been these really didn't start doing anything until like two weeks ago so uh, i just I, don't know, I think i would rather just take them out i think it would look a lot nicer and cleaner to just get all the long plants out of these containers and just see the blue in the front and leave them like that. Or maybe, can I just, that kind of worked on that one. Can I just do this? Is that all I need to do? And just tuck that up there. See if that's good enough for me. Is that going to make me feel better about these? No, oh, actually, yes. Okay, well I could just let them hang over the side like that and then pull the vinca and put the vinca somewhere else because I don't, they're too long and leggy for these containers. They need more space is the thing because of the U's in the middle they are just wanting to this one i pinned up but that's what they want to do and i think that that looks terrible i don't like it i want these to look more clean i could put a creeping jenny over the front in the very middle in each one of these i do like the way that looks against the blue pottery it's just green foliage and creeping jenny has such a straight and tight growth habit to it that that might look nice 
Oh, and I popped a, I didn't mention this. I had a couple extra of these compact <laughs> hot pink sun patients right here. That's what these are. I had them, so I figured, okay, well, I can go ahead and just toss those in there. May as well, since I have them, right? You just, I almost fell. Why did, don't stand by me, Turbo. You almost killed me. It's okay. You're a good boy. Yeah, the, I think that that might be a good idea. I need to clean them out some more because it is, it's still bugging me. Right now, I think that I will just leave them. Sometimes I need to do that. It's like I mentioned last night that I wanted to just think on it for a minute and decide what I really want to do. Because I also, I love the Vinca, especially the tattoo orange, but this just isn't the spot for it. It needs something more open where it can stand up. It's being forced out of the container by the U's that are in the middle. Is this tag driving anybody crazy? I don't want to take it out because I can never remember if I have the Hilly Eye versus the Hixie Eye U's over here. Maybe I can... That's a little bit better, I guess. And maybe I could take it and shove it down the soil, but then I'd forget that it's there. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see if I if I have some creeping Jenny, then I might just move forward. Okay, I do. I had two, which is perfect. These are just the regular creeping Jenny. They're not the Goldilocks kind. Here's this. Do you care? I don't, I don't think you do. You can see what I mean, hopefully, is that they just have a, a more tidy growth to them. They stay more flat against the containers. And they're easy to prune on if they take over, and they're perennial. I do so much with these containers that they'd only be perennial if I don't ever mess with them, so we would see what would happen with that. They can be semi-evergreen too, which would be nice. There will be a trailer over here for more months out of the year, being semi-evergreen. Uh, if it's a very mild winter, they might stay evergreen, but I highly doubt that would happen. I think that might be a good option, because you can still see the blue from the pottery, and uh, you don't have the mess. I don't have the mess. It just feels so messy. Right, do you see what I'm talking about? I do, the Zvinka though are so pretty. I, I know what I gotta do, they gotta go. If I can find a couple more of the compact pink sun patients, which I probably can, because the nurseries, most of them still have them in the little, four, what is it, two inch and four inch containers? I just had a hiccup, <laughs> I talked right through it. Should just edit that out, but I probably won't. Then I think that it would look better to get one put on each side and that will even things out because things are going to end up looking heavy on this end versus the other when I do this, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here, but I do think that these would look better without the trailers in them because they're just so tired and it's so late in the year and the sun has shifted too, so these aren't getting the same amount of light that they were getting when I first planted them up. Oh, well, the sun didn't shift, the planet did, you know what I mean? It... It, there's more shade. I think I talked about this at the nursery, didn't I? Maybe that was in last week's video. Gen it was last week's video. Usually around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, things are fairly shady. Like right here, there's a sharp line. And there's some sun over here, but it's just not what it is in the, what, really winter through, like, mid to late July. So because of that, I don't expect the petunias that much of a rebound, even if I were to cut them back. And it's not unusual for me to have to redo some containers or freshen things up with new annuals around August because of that. So, but that's usually when I was planting things like terrenias and a lot of fuchsias and things like that. I just don't bother with those anymore because I know that they don't like the change in them. I'm just rambling. I'm going to figure something out here and come back. Uh, I had been wondering why I've had to water these Creeping Jenny so much. And Creeping Jenny like a lot of water, but the amount that these have needed has just been insane. I've basically had to keep them in standing water. Look at the middle of this root ball. It's all gravel. There's so much gravel in there. It's way too airy for them. I bet they were probably grown on a wet table or something. Maybe they were intended for a pond. I don't really know. But that is, that's a lot of gravel on the inside of this thing. So I actually think that these will be much happier in these containers <laughs> because, well, they'll have more access to moisture, right? That's going to make a big difference. Could I... Do I need to explain? I don't think so. You probably get it. I decided to pull everything out. It was just too much for me. It was driving me crazy. Had to get it out of there. Sometimes you try something and you just don't love it. And I think that this is a big improvement. It's just more calm. Everything that was in these before, I feel like it, it was all fighting with each other. It wasn't working for me. It is going to bother me that there's only one sun patient in there. But like I said, I'll keep my eyes out and hopefully I'll find another one. There we go. That's so much better. I can 
breathe again. It is much more clean. The yeah, the sun and patient thing. I'm sure I've said it multiple times already. It is that's going to bother me. I'm going to want to get another one to put on each end in here, but otherwise so much better. So 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 much better. I have a few things to transplant. I'm not throwing any of these away, by the way. Like I'm not just tossing them. Just have to find something else to do with them. The majority of it's going to end up on my front porch, the vinca. I don't know, I think I'm probably just gonna have to toss them into some six inch pots for right now and see how they do because you know, Vinka really don't like having the roots disturbed. Over here, I need to make some changes. I've been talking about that. This guy right here has been bugging me. It's not planted up over here, it's just sitting down here in a cash pot. So I should be able to <laughs> just lift that out of there and get it moved somewhere else. Some place where that would be more fitting. I don't know where that would be, but anywhere else. For right now, it's just going to go right there. That's that's good. It can chill right there for right now. And well, I was thinking I need to put something else in place of that, but I don't I don't really hate how that looks just like this. I think that looks okay. I have the sun patient over here that I think would fit well over here. I had this beautiful. <laughs> it's something dug it up again. Jeez, the tropical rose sun patient was a big, beautiful plant, huge plant. And something came in here at night. I mean, just devoured this thing. I don't know what, assuming a possum. So I don't know what my point was there other than it bums me out. I wish that that was still there. I could move this to that spot. I'd like to put something over here in the middle or not middle, but the side of this container because it's just open and bare. So when you're sitting here, you just see dirt. That's not really ideal. And bringing this forward, just a smidge, would allow some more light over here. That wasn't potted up in there, it's in a container. Yeah, I'm fine with that. That's good, easy changes. And then for height, I don't know, should I put another one of these fredicasas in front? So you have them in the back and then one in the front? That might look okay. I have an extra over here that's just buried. You can't even see it because the ginger over here has grown so much. I could move this over there. That might work. Okay, changed my mind. Didn't want the cordolin over there because then they all would have been on one side of the staircase. That would have bothered me and then I remembered I've got this lutea perfect plant. It's doing everything that I wanted it to do. Remember I was saying? The black coral, it's just, it's too dark. I don't want it over here in the shade. This right here, it's got that nice chartreuse lime green with the bright yellow and the veining. And when I say shade, I just mean it feels like a dark corner particularly on a cloudy day like today. There is a good amount of sun that gets over here in the late morning through the afternoon. It's gonna get about six hours of direct sunlight. Well, it'll be somewhat filtered, right? Because it's got the fronds from the pygmy date palm up there. I think that this looks so much better. I like how that looks with the pink on the sun patient too. That looks so much better. The caladium that was over here, I went in and I just pulled it and see reason to film that. For the majority of them, I went underneath them with my fingers and tried to lift them up. So I'd get the corm as well, because if you don't, you snap them and then you still have the bulb down there and it's going to keep growing. It just made sense to pull it while I was pulling all the other ones so I can transplant that. In place of it, I just tossed this roeo. I think it looks nice there. This is also going to allow this begonia to get some more uh, TLC because that caladium was starting to crowd it. And I think that this looks fine. I'm okay with this. I, it's more peaceful. I like the colors and everything, and I kind of like the change in height as you're moving through here. I think that looks much, much, much better. It, it, I love caladiums, so don't get me wrong. It's just that one particular, the red, I'm not a fan of. If there were a white one right here or a green one, I would have loved it, but the red, I just, it wasn't for me. Oh, I just said so much and I wasn't recording. Don't even know where I left off. I was going to make some changes over here, and I decided that I'm not going to because I really do I like this. I think there's a good flow over here. A little bit crowded with the third seashell down there, but I may end up moving that seashell down to right over here on the ground where that neo jelly is probably going to end up as well. I think the only reason I wanted to show you all this, I was so I could show you the difference with the crazy tuning when it's getting the afternoon shade. It doesn't that, it just looks so much better, doesn't it? Could probably still use a cutback, but these are getting fed with a petunia feed fertilizer on a regular basis. That's about all you can do is give them the right fertilizer and cut them back when they need it and, you know, the other normal plant stuff. And this is how it's looking. I think it looks okay right here. I think the 
sun and conditions it just it wasn't right for them in those containers even from over here don't those look so much better i know there are probably some of you who really like the wild look on them before but to me this is just so much more calm and peaceful you have the green and some color just makes more sense in my head i don't want a lot of chaos and i uh, there can be chaos but i want it to look like it was organized and planned chaos which i know that that's not even a thing is it that looks so much better i love that the green it really stands out stands out so much more you can barely even see the black coral over there because it's overcast <laughs> see what i'm saying and i love the black coral is one of my favorite of the call occasions but it is one more working for me right there i think i liked it more when there was the big bushy variegated sun impatient behind it but since that's been gone it i hated it i hated how that looked and i think the color that you get with the lutea alocasia goes well with what you get over here with the zarumbit Alpinia on the other side of the steps. Those kind of flow nicely together, especially because these bromeliads, they're beautiful, but they're more of a darker tone. So that adds some lightness to the spot. I think that looks so much better. I'm really liking this. I would say this is a big improvement. It's supposed to start raining soon, so I'm going to head up to my front, which is where most of the stuff's going to end up, and get those things planted up, and I don't know, we'll cut back and do something else later. Maybe. This is the bulk of what I wanted to do for this video. <laughs> Might be about done, I'm not sure. I need to trim these cannas. Yes, another abrupt change. I don't know what to say. It happens all the time. A few different things I want to talk about that have nothing to do with what's been going on in the video. because it's, it's been too hot outside. So hot, actually, that hate baby. Three days have passed since the last clip you saw. Because it's in the upper 90s. Heat indexes were like 112. So all I've been doing outside is watering. The caladiums haven't been planted yet, but I've been putting them underneath the umbrella. I've been rolling the gorilla cart around there so that there's some shade for them in the afternoon. And they actually look pretty good. Surprisingly, it looked pretty good. I think things are cooling off now, so I'm going to try and get those planted up. If the if you guys tried these, I just got this in the mail and set it up in the garage to help blow the warm air down from the ceiling. I surprisingly like this. They're these fans that just screw into your light socket and they have a light on them, six speeds, they change colors. I don't know what brand this is. So they were originally an as seen on TV product, but the price on them is pretty crazy. And I found them on Timu, which I don't typically order stuff from them unless it's a product that is something that is just notoriously drop shipped. Then I'll order it from Timu because why am I going to pay the upcharge for somebody drop shipping the product if I can get it for cheap? So, anyways, it was like $39 for a two pack of these things. So it's like, well, that's a good deal. And I needed two new light fixtures for the garage. It's, things get pretty toasty out here during the summer, which is okay, but it can be a bit much for the fish that are in the pond. And uh, it's actually helping quite a bit having this to blow the air down. It has a remote control so you can adjust the fan speed you can even reverse the fan speed there's a timer on the remote control and the light is fairly bright you, you can change the color on the light but i don't know oh, i think i just did it so there's like that one that one and i don't know I, one of them look different the others look the same to me but at full blast the ceiling's 12 feet up there's a pretty good breeze down here i set the other one up over here on that side by the aeroids. Yeah, I still have the majority of my aeroids in here. I noticed last year, they just do not like being moved. So everything I grow and keep out here in this grow space are plants that I can bring in in the fall and then move them back out in the spring. And you know, they'll have some dieback sometimes, you know, the elephant ears and some of the philodendrons, but the anthuriums and like the gloriosums and the, the vici that's over there, they just do not like being moved outside. I move them outside, they throw a fit, almost completely defoliate sometimes. So I said, screw it, I'll just keep them in here, and they're thriving. Because they're mostly philodendrons, and the couple of anthuriums up there, but they do, they just don't care. They're doing great up there, so I'm, you can stay there, that's fine. whole point there being that these are surprisingly helping a good amount to cool the garage off, but... What I'm apprehensive about is, is this a bad idea? Because think about it. That seems like a good amount of vibration coming through these things that's now up there on that light socket. And that's not what light sockets are meant for. It just seems like maybe not a great idea. They seem pretty stable. 
after I installed this one, I did, I put my hand around the extension pole that's on there and I didn't really feel much vibration. It felt pretty smooth, steady, I should say. So hopefully it's okay. But again, I just feel like that's not what these are meant for. The light sockets for motion, you know, bulbs are supposed to hold still. I don't know, that's all. That's my little random bit for the video. We can go back outside now. Yeah, so things are a little bit more cool today. There's still a heat advisory, but when I look at the hourly, it says the high today is like 89. But the heat advisory says 96. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Regardless, I need to get these caladiums into the ground. They're looking pretty good considering it's been four and a half days since they were dug up and moved. Some of them are a little bit more wilty than others. It's around 10.30, 11 in the morning. I, don't, I can't see the time because I'm, I'm using my phone to record this right now. Too hot outside for the nice camera. So uh, that's normally when I would move these into the shade. I'm just going to sit there for right now because I'm going to get them planted here in just a minute. The situation over here with these planters, I mentioned in the garden tour, and I'm pretty sure at some point in this video that it was bugging me how there's just one pink or one compact pink sun impatient on the inside of both of these right here, these deck planters, and that's going to keep my eye out for a couple more. Well, that I, I found a couple more. They don't look great, and saying a couple more is a bit of a stretch. I found like one and a quarter more, but that's okay. They're here. They'll grow. It's fine. I knew I had to have some more of them because I bought six originally, and I have two planted over here, and then I have two more... Yeah, there's two in the front of these planters underneath the dolphins. So I was like, well, where are the other two? So I dug around and I found them, like, they had fallen over the edge of the base of the Alexander palm. Move my fingers, you can see what I'm talking about. They were in the base of that pot. But I remembered, oh yeah, I put them there when the palm trees were delivered. So before the palm trees were delivered, I had all my annuals and things staged up over here in this area to make it easier to water them and take care of things. So I had my own little nursery to pull from, but then when the palm trees were delivered and needed to move things around and get things set up, I went ahead and dispersed the plants more into the areas where I wanted to plant them and forgot that I had set those over there. I had mixed them in with some sun impatiens that I had picked up to plant in somebody else's yard. And uh, yeah, that's how I lost track of them. The petunias grew over the sides of their pots and I just didn't notice them, but I found them. So there's the end of that story. I know it doesn't change things that much but once they start flowering <laughs> if they start flowering it's gonna look so good you can see there's some buds on this one so that that one's more promising the other uh, i mean you can't really even see it but it's in there there's a little nub of something you can kind of maybe you can see it does it make sense to go buy different ones when i have some right here that i knew i could use and i think that'll look fine i went in and i put the one that's bigger over here in this container because I, just, I feel like it stands out more than the other one in this container on the right. You don't notice as much that there's only one impatient in there. I mean, now there's two, but you know what I mean. I think you get it. The pink from the hibiscus up there sort of helps balance it out. I guess you could say the same thing about the pink from the hibiscus down here. Regardless, there's some more symmetry, which just makes me a lot happier. I think these are looking pretty good. And like I said, it's been about four and a half days since you all saw these. So that would be, I think, five days, five and a half days since I planted these up. And they're already starting to look pretty dang good. Look at the pack of stackies over here that had the really curly, sad looking leaves. Cause I said, I think it was just getting too much afternoon sun in that parking lot. It's already looking so much better. The leaves are more elongated. They're not crispy. The one over here, actually, it even it has some fresh growth coming up out of it. I did mention when I planted these up that I should perhaps consider cutting them, like pruning them back by about 50% because that's going to force them to bush out and get much, much, much bigger. Whereas if I just leave them as they are, they're not going to do a lot size-wise, at least not from the growth that they already have. So I'll put up some new growth, but from what they already have not a lot's going to happen with them so it wouldn't be a bad idea it's just so late in the year it's really not there's still potentially whoa what was that that was a weird noise there's still uh, i'd say a good eight to perhaps even 12 weeks 
of growing time left for these. So, I don't know, it's something to consider. If I'm going to do it, it's something I should do right now. But I'm just, I'm going to give myself a week to enjoy the flowers. And then maybe I'll cut them back. I probably won't do it. I think y'all know me well enough. I probably won't do it, but I really should. They're going to end up being bigger and looking a lot nicer if I just go in there and prune them back. They only flower on new growth. So when you prune them back, that's just going to force them to push out more growth and get even bigger and even bushier. But you sacrifice the flowers, right? Yeah, it's something to think about. Just thought I should mention it more than anything, is that it's not a bad idea to do that. This hose, it's the, the this piece right here, very loud, very squeaky if you don't have it at just the right angle. All right, I'm just gonna give these guys a quick water because they're sitting over here in the sun. Probably gonna go back over them a couple more times, make sure the water, well, the water doesn't really need to flush through these all that well. They just need to be moist, the curcumas. Finally getting some growth out of one of these. Finally, man, curcumas, they take an eternity to come up. At least the hybrids do. I don't even remember what my point was there. Oh yeah, you need to handle these colladiums over here. The one, you saw them, the ones over there. You know, as far as these colladiums are concerned, I I was going to plant them behind the impatience that are over here, but I don't know, it just doesn't seem like a great idea anymore. Mostly because when I used to plant caladiums back here, it was because there was just a single row of impatience with caladiums behind them. It made sense. It looked good. But this year, I planted up the impatience in more of like a field. So it's hard to tell from here. I don't want to go up there. It's really awkward. Here, I can hide. I'm going to hide behind the Borneo giant. I planted the impatience all the way through here. Okay, you can't really see them from here, but they go back through and it's filled in the entire area. So there's not a spot to plant them as a backdrop like there used to be. Oh, this is really pretty. That looks nice. I'm up here. May as well go ahead and grab these weeds that I couldn't reach before. Just since I'm at it, get them from the roots. These things, they're everywhere this year. Don't, I'm not sure why. Well, actually, I think it has something to do with all the soil and everything that was overturned from the construction next door. Look at that one. I can't get to that without trampling the impatience, so I'll get to that later. I'm going to be up here doing some work. The, yeah, the point there is I don't really have a spot to plant the caladiums behind anything. I'd just be mostly potentially damaging the impatience that are here trying to find a spot for them. I thought about maybe tucking them in here, but I think that that red would really bug me with the blue. I don't, the red on the banana doesn't because it's, well, it's not that red because the sun isn't that strong over here like it used to be, so... I don't think that would look good either. Oh, the Candy Crush. It's blooming. I was bummed that it didn't have any flowers on it for the garden tour. There it is. That's what those look like. Glad to be able to give a glimpse of that one. That's a plant where it's more like, yeah, next year. That's when that's going to look its best. You know, when you dig up those machetos, hibiscus, they take some time to bounce back. That actually kind of plays into what I was talking about with the Pakistakis lutea over here. They're a plant where if they're in flower they're done growing so if you buy a hardy hibiscus and it's in flower and you want to keep it flowering go ahead and enjoy it but if you plant them and then cut them back by about 50 percent even like 75 percent just cut them so there's just some nubs then oftentimes they will regrow to being even bigger and more beautiful than they were in the nursery container whereas with these <laughs> you can do that but they are not as programmed to just bloom like those mochettos are, those hibiscus. So uh, it's there's a potential risk that if I were to cut these back right now, that in a few weeks after they've put up enough growth and it's long enough and mature enough for them to go ahead and want to bloom, the sun may not be here for them because it's going to be later in the year and things are a lot more shady over here by the time that happens. I never finished that thought. I know there's lots of ADD happening. Hope you're enjoying the ride. Okay, so the other plan with the caladiums, getting back to that, the um, uh, Adenidia container over here, it's looking pretty sparse. So there's lots of room in there. I could just pop them in there. Why not? It does feel a little bit silly that I'm putting so much time and energy into trying to find a spot to plant things that I don't even want. Again, it was an assorted pack, and the stuff that came out of it just it wasn't to my liking this year. That's never happened before. It's not a normal thing. It, I just, it would be wasteful to throw them away, right? So I think that this is probably the way to do things. Let's toss them in there. 
I, it's fine. It'll do. I don't hate it. I don't really know what else to do with them. As I said, they're not my favorite as far as colloidiums go. I wish I had a sweet potato vine to get to grow over the edge of this container. They look wealthy and rough right now, but you know how that goes. They were just dug up. So hopefully in a week, two weeks, they'll be all popped up and happy looking. There'll be some more color over here. They don't bother me in this container. In fact, I, I like them in this container. It was just over there. That's just, like I said a million times this video, just wasn't working for me. Over here, not bothering me. So it must have been the combination of them with the U's and those Redemption Colochesias that are back there. Can you even see them? These right there? I think you can see them. <laughs> no, my head doesn't turn that far. And instead of turning my entire body, I was more focused on making sure to water and get these things watered in. I took all the Vinca that I pulled from the containers and I put them into a, just a couple of regular nursery pots. So they're grouped together and I can do something else with them if I want to. I can even take them inside and overwinter and Vinca overwinter in the growth space pretty easily if I wanted to. They're actually kind of fun to keep inside because so you don't have to water much and as long as they're getting enough light they'll just flower and flower and flower and there aren't a lot of plants that'll flower for you during the winter time. So that could be fun having the Vinca in the growth space this year. Speaking of things I need to prune back which I guess was a couple minutes ago, but <laughs> you've been here. You know what I've been talking about, this petunia. That could use a rejuvenation prune for sure. I might do that. Let me see if I can find my snips. I might give that a cut back. Now, with the petunias, found my clippers here. They are so good about continuing to flower and look nice into the fall time, up until we have some frost, and sometimes even a light frost doesn't kill them back all the way you get the cooler temperatures and sometimes they just start to flower even more abundantly so that being on mine that means that okay so eight to twelve weeks cut these back in a month they should be flushed back out and much more full and bushy at least that's the goal anyways it's the entire point of cutting them back and then we'll have a nice display of fresh flowers in the late summer early fall. Yeah, I think that that's going to be good for this. Get a lot of that old, tired stuff out of there. I know, it doesn't leave much. It makes it look pretty sad, but it definitely needed it. Also, if I didn't have this tucked back into the shade, I would not be doing this right now. A little bit warm for this sort of thing. An oak tree in here. Squirrel's been busy doing some gardening in the containers in the spot. I just realized what it is about this palm tree that's bugging me and why I, I just I hate it okay I don't hate it it's a cute palm tree but this dumb Adenidia ever since it was delivered there's just been something about it that I didn't like I, you'll maybe remember that when I was trying to figure out what to do with this spot over here and I ended up putting the double trunk over there instead of the single trunk and it's that it doesn't have any flair by flair I don't mean like personality although kind of kind of personality the crown is still all tight and upright it's not open. Well, I guess it's open. Closed means that the crown is really tight together, so it's somewhat more of a closed crown. By the time an Adenidia has this much trunk on it, the top of it, the crown, all of those fronds should be going much more <laughs> flat out from the center, but these are still upright. There's still a lot of verticalness going to them. They're running more parallel-ish instead of horizontal. You can see that over here on this Adenidia. See how the fronds come out and they have that nice arch to them that you want to see with an Adenidia palm and they're much more horizontal or parallel to the ground. But not this one, no. And that's pretty normal from the Adenidias I've been seeing the last few years. The production's up on them, so they're closer together in the field. So this is what you end up with and you have to wait some time and give them a lot of sun without anything around them for those to go ahead and open up. That's what it is. See, so on smaller palm trees, when they're seedlings, little baby palm trees, that's completely normal. If I'm going to come over here, I should take my clippers with me. Like on these vicias, they're still technically seedlings. So the fronds come up and they just stick straight up. They're not flared out yet. That's totally normal because they're babies. They're climbing for the light. But that Adenidia back there, it's big enough that it's not climbing for light anymore. I'm only pruning off the stuff that's all the way brown. That's the, what's going on there. It's not trying to hurt the palm tree. It's just it finally opened up a new frond 
and these completely browned out, so cut them out. This one doesn't want to stand up right in its container. I need to put a stake on it, I think. This miracle growth, that's it's waterlogged. I don't know what to do with it. I could spread it in the garden, but it has a lot of perlite in it. It's very peaty, which isn't really going to hurt anything over here because the soil leans itself more towards alkaline. So that wouldn't be bad. I just haven't gotten around to it because it's always sopping wet and gunky. It was just a bad batch of soil. That's why it's over here. I need to do something with that. And uh, maybe move this. I think I should move this. It's harder to get the water to it right there because the plants in the queen palm will come up so high that it's hard when I'm standing over here to get the hose directed to this pot. It'll do better right here anyways. There's a sprinkler head right there. Look how thick this frond is that it's pushing up right now. That's going to be a really nice big one. That's a girthy frond. You can see where all the lines are. So that's all going to be penne. Penne being the <laughs> pieces or ears of the frond over here. They're the these things, the little lobes that hang out from the center of the frond. And that's full all the way down there. So it's gonna be a nice size frond. I'm really happy about that because you know, these were shipped with basically no roots on them. So they've been over here getting part sun and heavy irrigation. And for the first, I wanna say three weeks that they were out here, once a week I was watering them with a uh, root stimulator just to get them moving. Oh, but yeah, point there this is normal these are still babies so their fronds are going to be much more upright whereas with that adenidia over here well, that's not the case at all it should be open and <laughs> flared out but instead it's over here just looking like a twerp that's actually a good thing to recognize as to what it is about this palm tree that's been bugging me because that's something that is easily fixed like i said a lot of sun and not having it crowded by anything then I would think by this time next year, whatever's coming out of the middle there should be opened and flared out. I know, nobody asked. It's just, it's been on my mind. I think it's because the garden tour just came out and I've been talking about the redemption and I took it very easy with how I was saying that I'm not a fan of it because a lot of people love it. And I don't want to bash on it either because, you know, the Brian's Botanicals, they worked hard to put this plant out, but I'm just like, I really don't like it. Like, I look over here and I go, ugh get that thing out of here not quite that extreme that's being dramatic but uh it's just not for me i think it's because i really i prefer like the white lava and the waikiki whereas this is sort of the inverse of that so it makes sense that i wouldn't like it but i totally understand why people do like it and i can acknowledge why it is a good plant they are vigorous they're sturdy and they have a really nice growth form to them. If you live in 7B, 8A, where you have really short winters, these turn into really big, beautiful, bushy clumps. Where I am, I don't think that's ever going to be the case, and I don't think I have any spot in my garden that gets enough sun to really darken these up and bring out the extreme contrast that you want to see with the black and the red. I really, like, during that garden tour, I really held back. I kept it to just, you know, I don't really like it here <laughs> because I don't want to offend anybody. I understand why people would like it, but for me, it's just, it's not working. The Maui Gold, that's what I should have put in these, but I didn't see them anywhere for sale this year. And when I did that, okay, I saw a few of them. So let me explain. I did see them for sale, but they were very small and very expensive. And they, they were all in Proven Winners containers. You know, Proven Winners didn't make them, but they buy out plants sometimes. They'll buy into the trademark on plants to sell them. That's totally normal. There's nothing wrong with that. They're charging Proven Winners prices for them. So they're like 25, 30 bucks for ones that were not very big. And I'm like, man, this is, that's a colocasia that's been around for a long time and does not need to be very expensive. I'm moving these to the shade now. They've taken root. They don't need sun. This is that curcuma. It doesn't need to be sitting out in the sun. That'll just kill it once that leaf opens. The Maui Gold, I used to get them for like anywhere from $7.99 to $12.99 a pop for the same size. I'm not paying 25 to 30 bucks for them. So that might be something where next year I'll remember that and order them or get the Waikikis. I think those would be beautiful over here. I love the Waikiki. Or even better, the Polar, not Polar Green, Pharaoh's Dream. Love that one. I am really hopeful. I, I'm rooting for that plant. I, th that is going to become a staple someday at the garden centers because the leaf on that, it, to me, it's just so pretty. I, don't, I should probably be over here talking about it, but I just raped about it in the garden tour. 
so it's not like you don't know what I'm talking about if you saw that video. They do take a while to get their variegation on them, but I wouldn't think it would be that long if you're planting them from a larger site. So when I got this in the mail, it was like this big. It was a puny little thing. It was so small that they sent me two. And well, actually they sent me a red Pharaoh's mask in addition to this. They meant to send me two of the Pharaoh's dreams, which was nice of them. They're expensive. I think it was like 80 to 100 bucks, but that's pretty normal when it's the first year that a plant's been rolled out. I really hope these have the vigor and the stamina to be a plant that can hit the mass markets. Because look at that leaf. It looks even better. In the garden tour, you couldn't really tell how beautiful it was when it been storming. Look at how it like cups and comes out. And just imagine when that variegation comes out more. These lines in here are supposed to be a smidge bit more white than this. But what a fun shape. That's just such a neat and unusual leaf for a colocasia that's supposed to be hardy into zone 6. Gonna take some more years and some more trial to really say that for sure. But Brian's Botanical said it's been overwintering for them flawlessly. And I think they're kind of like me, 6B, 7A, something like that. So that's why when I have that in comparison to the, <laughs> the, the Redemption over here, I'm like, eh. I mean, I just, I like the green and I like that fun shape to it. And uh, we can't even see the Redemption because I need to cut these back. I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut these back. You know what? Let's look at how it looks from the inside. I think that'll be less shocking to everybody. You got a glimpse of it before. And here's now. Look, you can actually see out the window again. Isn't that view so much better? You can see the pool and the hydrangeas and the gorgeous mimosa tree, the bananas, the little gem magnolia that was being swallowed by these cannas. So this is why I've talked about with these cannas, I want them to grow from like right here to there. That's fine. Anything forward, they're so tall that as the sun shifts, we get later into the summer, they start to arch forward and then shade everything down below them. And they're vigorous. You have to cut a few back. That's okay. They're cannas. You know, give them prune, leave some foliage on them, and that'll just make for bigger, sturdier rhizomes next year. And next year when they come up, you dig them up, right? The ones that are in the spots where you don't want them growing, the ones that are further forward in the garden bed, you just lift those rhizomes and leave the others in the back. I didn't do that this year, and this is, I know, it's jarring, but just sometimes you got to do things for the garden, for the plants, that is better for their health, but not necessarily great aesthetically. So I know there are people who are going to be bummed that that big wall of beautiful cannas is gone. But by doing this, I have one, made it so that all of these plants are completely stretched out and leaning forward. I've brought in light for the sable miners and all the gingers that are over here. One of the sable miners that's over there is in like nearly pitch black. Nowhere near enough light for it. That little gem had a rough winter and the cannas were completely covering it up. At least, well, okay, like covering up this much of it. So mostly covering it up. And all this has done is allow more light in, so the growth that's in the back there that has been getting shaded out by the growth in the front can go ahead and push up and fill in back in that area again. I know, it's a drastic change, but overall for the health of the garden, all the plants that are over here, it's just what needed to be done. And you can actually see the things again. And I think that the Pharaoh's Dream, which I've been ranting over, I think it's really going to appreciate that too. It's supposed to be standing straight up. It's not supposed to be leaning forward like that. And I got some stuff to get moved out to the yard waste. I should have done this yesterday. Yard waste went out last night. But well, it was storming, and I also didn't feel like it. Okay. I overall feel pretty good about what little I was able to get done this week because, you know, the heat and there's some things going on life-wise. This, to me, looks so much better. The other ones were pretty, but like I said, it was just everything was fighting. And this is just more calm and tranquil and clean. And I got all the stuff off the top of the hot tub. The curcumas, those six inch containers that are right here. I just had those up there because the heat from the sun to help get them moving and doing their thing, but they'll get the same thing right here on the ground. And as soon as they pop up any green on them, which will hopefully be soon, because that other one started to pop up yesterday, chances are by this weekend, maybe a few more days than that, once they have green on them, they have to go back to the part shade as well. And then I'll probably move them up into a larger container. No, I won't, it's too late to do that this year. But that's the whole point. Things look better out here, in my opinion. Much more clean and tidy by having that all taken care of. And uh, all the other little things, the caladiums that are over here in the Adenidia pot, they're going to need some time. If they're still wilty and sad looking tomorrow, then I'll come in and I'll just cut them back completely to the soil and they'll pop back up. It'll be like nothing ever happened to them in a couple of weeks. And then, uh, yeah, same thing with those cannas. In a few weeks, there's going to be more growth from back closer to the wall because they're not being shaded anymore. 
and that'll fill back out and it'll look really good again. <sighs> okay, and on that note, I think the 96 degree forecast is the one to pay attention to because it's already 92, so the one that said 87, they're liars. Definitely had that wrong, which means I gotta get back to watering. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks for hanging out. Feels good to be outside, have things nice and clean and hydrated for the most part. That's been the good thing is at least we've been getting some rain mixed in with the heat. I thought I saw something up there I needed to print off, but I think it's just a piece of chain from that ball light that's up there. Yeah, what's going on in your gardens? It's too hot to be gardening? It's probably for most of y'all, it is. Same here, you need to chill out and just water things for a couple weeks. Well, not really, actually, I think next week's supposed to be a lot nicer. Anyways, okay, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Oh, it looks like someone was listening to me during the garden tour talking about how they weren't flowering. <laughs> Got a butt on the impatience. That's not something you're supposed to have to be excited about. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.